Welcome to Investigation 4.2. We are going to be looking at area and profit and seeing if there's a connection in there given certain scenarios. So we're going to be using some equations for this and our job will be to primarily look at those equations and the graphs that could be created from them or the tables of values that could be created and just seeing how the equations sort of work. At the same time, um, creating those equations can be a little difficult. So this video is primarily based on how to create those equations. So that way then you can look at the data, which you already know how to do. You already know how to analyze that because you create tables and you can create graphs of those tables. So let's get started. This investigation is all about finding connections between various different scenarios. So we're going to be looking for specifically finding connections between various equations. Tony and Paco work for a water park. Tony is responsible for the design of the building for storing tubes for the water slides, and Paco is in charge of determining the prices for renting the tubes. So they have two different jobs. They clearly work in the same area. They work in the like tube rental business, essentially, but they both have very different jobs in terms of that. So let's look specifically at Tony's job. Tony. Every concession... Tony has these parameters. Every concession stand must have a rectangular floor space and a perimeter of 88 meters. We need to write an equation for the area of this floor space in terms of the length of one side. So this is A number 1. Your job will be to do A number 2. But A number 1, we've already done problems like this where we are essentially looking at a rectangle and we are figuring out how to break this rectangle down instead of looking at it as length times width to find the area we need to rewrite width in terms of the length so what we do know about this particular rectangle is all the way around it has a fixed perimeter it is stuck at 88 meters. We've done this. If we look back at um, our Frogs, Fleas, and Painted Cubes book, this was one of the very first few investigations that we looked at. I think it was actually the first two or three. We looked at situations with fixed perimeter. If we have a fixed per perimeter, our length and our width are, are going to need to stay... Con like They're going to need to play sort of be manipulated a little bit, but what we'll end up finding is a quadratic situation. So that's kind of interesting. We have a fixed perimeter of 88 meters. That means the length plus the length over here and the width on each side added together should get us 88 meters. So we have essentially two lengths plus two widths would get us a total of 88 meters. Well, this is all fine and dandy, but it's a little difficult to manipulate and deal with. So let's actually look at just maybe half of this shape. So we can deal with instead part of this. So we have just simply length plus width is equal to 44. What we need though is to find out what width is in terms of length. So essentially we need to isolate the variable w. We want to get it all by itself. So in order to do that we're going to subtract the length on both sides and we'll get simply that w is equal to 44 minus the length. So if we need to figure out the area, we can just simply say area is equal to the length times the width. But instead of writing W, we are writing 44 minus L. So our equation that we can write for this to find the area in terms of the length of one side is area times the length times the width, and the width is written as that one side. So here is our equation. We can rewrite this 
as this. So we have area is equal to length times 44 minus the length. So we could rewrite this using the distributive property and we could say the area is equal to the length times 44 minus the length times the length. So we could then finish this up with area is equal to 44 times the length minus minus L times L or length squared. So we have two versions of this, but if we notice, this is quadratic. Your last step for this will be to find the actual maximum area for that rectangular floor space. That'll be something that you can do very much on your own. You can do this. I'll give you a couple of hints. You could make a table. You could graph it after you've made the table, or you could guess and check, trying to find the vertex specifically of the parabola that fits this equation. So you want to find the vertex, that turning point, where it's the highest point on that graph. That's what you want to find. So let's move on. Let's look at Paco. Play around with Tony's stuff, so you need to finish up A2. Paco, we're going to be looking at B2 and 3. So that means you have to not only do A2, but you also need to do B number 1 before you really get to this problem. So you'll just have to decide whether or not the equations that they provide to you these two equations, if they make sense with the scenario. I think you can do that. So we have Paco. Paco knows that on a typical day, the number of tubes rented is related to the rental price. So number one, if the tubes are free, there will be a 54, or 54 tubes rented on average. So that's pretty good business. With each increase in price, so each increase in price, the tubes will result in a loss of one fewer tube being rented. And I should say, not just an increase in price, with each $1 increase in price, the tubes will result in a loss of one fewer tube being rented. So our first equation that we have is the number of tube rentals, number of tube rentals, is equal to 54 minus 1 times the price per rental. So essentially, this is telling me for every time a do the dollar value increases, we will see a decrease in the rental. As well, we have the income, which is equal to the tube rental times the price. And that makes sense. Tube rental times price should give you income, right? So we need to write an equation for the income in terms of the number of rentals. So instead of writing income and n times p, we are going to rewrite this p, so instead of it being the price, we want to write it so our answer has an n in it. So we're going to use a second equation. This is called substitution, when we essentially take one equation and find, for the other equation, we find essentially and we isolate the variable, so this time we're going to isolate the variable p, so we can put everything else into this second equation. So we have the number of tubes is equal to 54 minus 1 times p. We want to get p all by itself, so my first step is to actually subtract 54. So now I have n minus 54 equal to negative 1p. That negative 1 is multiplying that p, so I am going to divide by negative 1. Divide this by negative 1. So n divided by a negative 1 will get me a negative n, and negative 54 divided by 1 will get me a positive 54, and that is equal to p.
Another way I could write this is simply saying P is equal to 54 plus a negative N or 54 minus N. So I'm going to put this information right here into this equation here for P. So let's find out the income in terms of the number of tubes rented. So we have our second equation, I is equal to N times P. Instead of writing P, we're going to write 54 minus, or 54 minus N. So we have the income from the tubes is equal to the number of tubes sold or rented out times 54 minus N. So that is our equation. We can do a little bit more with this equation if we want to and we can see what happens. So I'm going to distribute this N in here. And I'll get I is equal to N times 54, or 54N, and N times a negative N, or negative N squared. N times N will get me N squared. So there's my income equation in terms of N. Now the next question is this. The expense and storage of the tubes is $10 per tube per day. Write an equation for the daily income for the park in terms of number of rentals. So we're looking at the daily profit essentially, which would be the income minus expenses. So we need to think about what are these expenses. Our expenses our expenses are ten dollars per tube per day. So we have ten dollars times the number of tubes. As well my income, I just figured out, was over here. My income is 54n minus n squared. So income is equal to 54n minus n squared. I'm rewriting that so I can move this screen over a little bit. So if that is our income and this is our expense, we can write our daily profit as being our income 54n minus n squared, subtracting our expenses, 10 times n. If we want to, we can actually do a little bit more simplification, so let's get rid, rid of those parentheses. We can say the daily profit is equal to 54n minus n squared minus 10n, I see like terms here in the 54n and the negative 10n. So we can say that the daily profit is 54n minus 10n minus n squared, or daily profit is 44n minus n squared. That is an interesting equation. I do believe we have seen something similar. I want you to play around with these ideas. Finish this investigation up. You need to reverse this video, back it up a little way so you can play around with it some more, and enjoy. You are essentially doing investigation 4.2 A through B, but you really only need to do A 2, B1, and B4 through 5. We've already completed A1 and B2 and 3 for you. So enjoy, have fun, and as always, if you have any questions, please ask. Thanks so much, and I'll see you later.